Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chris. Welcome to Linux Tech Geek. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to set up an LSP server in Emacs. Now, the reason that I'm going to be doing this video is because I've been doing a lot of programming here lately and I've been messing around with different LSPs and everything and I thought it would be pretty cool to show you guys how I pretty much I set up, you know, my Emacs as my IDE. Now, if you're not a programmer or you don't care really about programming, this video really may not be for you. But for some of us, um, you know, we enjoy tinkering around and um, a lot of us do write code. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up an LSP on Emacs. And uh, we're going to do one completely from scratch that I don't have set up. I'm also going to show you my Emacs config and how I have um, a couple LSPs already set up. And then I'm also going to show you guys um, what my, um, what an LSP is, right? So what is a LSP? Well, an LSP is a language server protocol, right? You have to think of it like this. You have your text editor, okay? Then you have your LSP that kind of sits in the middle. And then you have your language server on the other side. And the idea is that your, LS, your LSP communicates with the language server. And then the language server... Well... The LSP talks to the language server, and then it translates all of that stuff to your text editor, okay? So if, if you guys have ever uh, used a Visual Studio Code or VS Code, um, that's, you know, like when you do the fancy uh, dot and you get, you know, IntelliSense popping up and you get all these, these fancy uh, things going on in the text editor to help you code, that's pretty much what an LSP does, all right? So let me go ahead and show you guys my Rust LSP here because uh, I've been doing a little bit of stuff in Rust. And um, so if I go Rust, uh, if I can type here. So Rust, source, So, okay, I have my Rust LSP going, okay? The Rust language server that I'm using is uh, Rust Analyzer, all right? But this is pretty much what LSP does, right? So if we do, you see how I'm typing? And all this fancy stuff kind of pops up, and it's telling me w what these functions do or what these macros do in this case. That's... You know, that, that's what an LSP is supposed to do. It's supposed to help you out. Anybody that tells you, <laughs> anybody that tells you that they can remember every single bit of a programming language and they know every single function and every single return type, they're lying, okay? Us programmers, you know, we don't, we don't like to type. And... and this stuff is it's really meant to just kind of help you out, right? Because us humans, we forget things, okay? And programming language, you know, programming languages, some of them are very big, very complex, okay? And we need help remembering, hey, does this thing return something? Uh, what's this function, you know, what kind of parameters does this function need? And all this stuff. Like, for instance, I mean, you can see right here my I, uh, the IO uh, standard input. Like, you can see this is, I mean, this is a pretty, you know, pretty big, uh, big line of text right here. So, an LSP is just meant, it's really just meant to, to kind of help you out, okay? And see, like, if I do... And it, it, it would pop up, and it would even show me, like, some examples and stuff like that. So, that's pretty cool. Alright, but I'm going to show you my Emacs config super fast, okay? 
And then what we'll probably do is I'll probably set up a LSP uh, for Python. Okay, uh, Python's a pretty popular programming language, and I don't have a LSP or anything set up for Python that uh, I can remember right now. So let me go ahead and show you guys my my LSP, my development stuff, and everything. So right here, pretty much, we have a um, we have this LSP mode. Okay, this is what's going to give us the LSP. Actually, let me go ahead and uh, let me get this bigger for you guys. All right. Uh, so you can see this LSP mode right here. And then you got, I have my LSP. And then you can also see that it turns on LSP uh, whenever I'm in, you know, Rust. And then we have this LSP UI. And, um, and you can also see I got a LSP for C++ because um, I do a bit of C++ programming as well. So the LSP package I was using that for that was CCLS. Um, and then I uh, also has some stuff for Nix mode. And that's because, as you guys know, um, um, I also mess around with Nix. Uh, today, however, we're actually in Gentoo. And uh, yeah, it was pretty good. So you can see this, I got Rust mode right here. I got Tomo mode, um, all of this kind of stuff, right? I got tree setter grammar set and all that. So, all right, enough about that. So how do we, how do we set up a LSP? So there is a fantastic website that goes over all of that LSP type of stuff for Emacs. And this website is great it focuses on just emacs it, it focuses on vanilla emacs space max doom emacs you name it they have it on this like lsp uh sort of website just for emacs and what we want to do is we want to find the python lsp stuff right now some of these languages have many different lsps all right, so you can see right here, Python has like five of them. They got Rough, they got Microsoft, Pyrite, uh, Palantir, Jetta, Pi, Pi Lisp, or Pi LSP. I don't know, I don't know enough about these LSPs to tell you which one's the best one. Okay, all I can say is we're gonna try like one or two to see if we can just get it to work. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it works. Um, I'm trying to see here about the uh, about the Emacs specific stuff. So this tells you right here. Pip install Python LSP server, okay. And then there's another site right here. The base language server requires Jetta. Okay. What about Jetta? How do we set up Jetta? That one said we need a Jetta. Oh, pip. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. So we could probably set up Jetta, right? So this is exactly how we would set it up for Emacs. Right, we just do the use package, LSP, Jetta, Ensure T, you know, all of that stuff. Okay. Now the only thing is we need to set up. So we had that. Okay, we had that. 
But now what we need to do is figure out how to actually install the Jedi language server. All right. Now I am on Gen 2 today. Um, so let's do EIX. Let's see if it's in the... See, it's not in the... Uh, We're going to have to use PIP, I think. Not a big fan of PIP. Not a big fan of PIP. But we can, uh, we can, we can use it. So PIP3 install minus capital U Jedi language server. Okay. All right, EIX devling Python Jetta, maybe? All right, well, I came to this little package, um, I mean, this website right here, talking about some of the Gen 2 packages, and I'm guessing that I just need to get the Python LSP server package here on Gen 2, so we're, I'm just, I'm just going to try that, um, supposedly that installs Jetta, I think, so we can do EIX Python uh, LSP, yeah, so we can do emerge dev hyphen python python lsp server if I can type. Alright, and I'm going to get these packages. Okay, so that package does pull in Jetta. That's, that's good to know. That's good to know. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and install these. And we do have to let these compile. And then what we need to do is we still have to set this up in um, our Emacs. Okay, and in Emacs there are two different uh, LSPs available. There's LSP mode or LSP server, and then there's something called uh, Eglot or Eglot. I personally just use the LSP, uh, the LSP one. Um, it's a little bit more mature than uh, Eglot or Eglot, however you however you pronounce it. I don't know, but that's the one I personally use. So, a Emacs client for Python and Jedi language server LSP client for okay, okay, we we understand what's what the LSP Jedi stuff is, right? All right, so hopefully that's that's all in installed here. So let's go ahead and pull up some Emacs, okay. And then I'm just going to make a new thing. And I'm just going to call this, uh, I'll just call this email, or uh, I'll just call this Python. Um, the not. No. <laughs> I am fighting with my keyboard. All right. So pretty much we're going to do... Uh, I don't understand how come this is like freaking out. Go up there. Alright. Um, we'll call this... Jetta... Jetta for Python. Emacs Lisp. Alright. So what we need to do is just say... Use... Use package... Uh, Jetta. So, use package 
LSP hyphen Jetta. All right, and then we can do insure insure T. All right, we can tangle it, and now we'll uh, space E R. All right, it's cloning now. All right, we got some warnings. No biggie. No big deal. No big deal. All right. So I think... So I, th I, I really, I think that's pretty much it. Um... I don't see anything on the, uh, okay, here we go. Here's some more stuff. Yeah, I don't see anything else that really we have to do. Add Python TS mode support. All right. So let's I'm gonna go ahead and quit. And then I'm going to get in another workspace. I'm going to get my other workspace here. Okay. And then, was it nine? All right. Well, actually, you know what we need to do? We need to go ahead and make a, um, we'll just go ahead and make a new directory. So make their, and I'll just say, uh, I'll just say Python, uh, I don't know, Python example. Okay, and then I'll do touch, uh, we'll just call this main.py for Python, okay. And then I'll just open it up in Emacs. Um, what do I call it? Python example. Main.py. Okay. And then. So it knows something's because, uh, let me see if I can turn on the LSP for it. Or, uh, LSP. Okay. Whenever, so sometimes what you have to do is you have to tell your LSP that for, like, a specific file or whatever, okay? So I'm going to hit the dot, and pi LSP is working right now. All right, so now, <laughs> now if we do def, um, right, we're gonna do I don't know def main, I guess that's a and then print, yeah, see it works. I mean I don't know any Python, so I can <laughs> I can't even begin to to do anything cool or anything but i mean we get we get some things at the very bottom of the screen you know we got uh i can do i can do hello world for you guys that's about it all right and if i write it I don't even know if that's going to uh, <laughs> if that's going to actually work, but the LSP does work, guys. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, I'm really, really, really bad uh, with Python, um, shamefully, because it, it's it's a good language, but I just uh, it's not it's not great for me. <laughs> um, but we could do like if else, you know. Every, I mean, everything seems to work the way. 
that yeah see we got class method or classes so we can say class dog for instance right and then one two three four and then we can say uh dog or um So that's pretty much how you set up an LSP, okay? All you do is you go to that web page, all right? You find out the, or first figure out the language that you want to learn or that you're programming in, okay? Go to that web page, find the LSP that you want, okay? There's a whole big list of LSPs, okay? You need to install the language server locally on your machine. And you also need the Emacs package that kind of corresponds to, to that. So, um, so in that instance, like I, I installed Jedi and on the local machine and Jedi and PyWrite or PyLint was working in Emacs, okay? But that's pretty much how you do it. I mean, it, it's pretty simple, and it just really does help out you as a developer, um, you know, if you need an IDE, or if you're just sick of using Visual Studio Code, like, I get it. I, I, I do use Visual Studio Code, but I do understand because I've been switching around, you know? I've been, I use Visual Studio Code for a little bit, then I'll use Emacs, and then I'll use, um, I got my NeoVim set up for all my Rust um, stuff too, so it's pretty cool. Alright, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, it does help out the channel, and if you guys have any questions, or, or comments, or anything like that, drop them down below, and I'll do get back to you guys, and until next time, you guys take care, be safe, peace, bye guys.